Just feel your feelings. You gotta feel it to heal it. What does that even mean? My biggest issue with the feel your feelings rhetoric is that it's correct, but it's not necessarily helpful, especially for those of us who have a long history of over intellectualizing and not really being in our bodies, which is where our feelings reside. In order for many of us to feel our feelings, it's really important for us to understand our feelings. Our nervous system struggle to feel safe, messing with things that we can't yet understand, that we don't understand. So I already did an entire crash course on know your feelings and that is to help with all of that. But I wanted to do this video specifically on one part, which is how to feel your feelings, because I find that that's the thing that people are asking about the most. So I'm gonna break that down for you and I'm gonna give you a few steps, but of course we're gonna start with the nature of things. The big thing to understand about the nature of what it means to feel your feelings is that when I feel my feelings, I am with them, but I'm not shrinking to become them. Most of us, when we feel our feelings, if we're crying, if we feel sad, we become our sadness. If we're angry, we become our anger, we become our despair, we become our grief, which grief might be a special one, right? Regardless, you get what I'm saying, we become all of these things. And what happens when we shrink to become them is we lose access to the wholeness of us. If I shrink to become my anger, I lose access to my compassion. Same thing can happen with my sadness and my despair. I can lose access to the compassion within myself that could otherwise hold this sadness and this despair within me. I wanted to explain this to give you an aim for what to work toward. When I am angry and I am with my anger but not becoming my anger, I'm able to recognize I'm angry right now. But I also have compassion. I also have wisdom. I have foresight I have all of these other parts of me at the table with my anger Go ahead and drop in the comments if you have any questions at this point But I'm gonna continue to explain the steps These are gonna be steps for you to practice and it does take practice So try to ease your way into it. Step one is to notice and name I always like to start with noticing and naming because it brings me to the present moment and it kind of gets me in a position I call it facing and what facing does is it helps interrupt the pattern of shrinking into the feeling to become it. This even works with anxiety. And so let's say I am driving and I notice some tension in my body. Feelings live in the body, so we're gonna spend more time there, but stick with me. Let's say I'm driving and I notice some tension in my body. If I notice it and name it, and I'm like, what am I feeling right now? I'm feeling something. Oh, I'm feeling anxious. I have anxiety right now. Great, notice that I'm not my anxiety. I'm feeling my anxiety. I'm already starting to create some healthy space between me and this feeling, right? Feel free to practice it as you're watching this video. Notice what's going on in your body right now and ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? If you're not able to yet feel your feelings in your body, if you don't have access to that yet, that's okay. A lot of us have a sort of conceptual idea of what it is that we're feeling. And so you can start there. And that's step one. You turn to face the feeling and this sort of positions you in the right position to be with it without becoming it. Even if you were just to practice that part, you might notice some significant changes just because you're interrupting that pattern of them overtaking you. But we still have step two. So the next thing that I would do is I would notice into my body, maybe not while driving in that specific example, but I would notice into my body. I'm talking about the physical sensations because that is where our emotions live. It's our body's way of communicating with us what needs that we need to have met or what needs aren't being met or what needs are being met, right? That's essentially what feelings are here to do. So when we talk about anxiety, we're worried normally about a future need that we're afraid isn't going to be met. Sometimes we just get the physical sensation of that. Sometimes there's a story, a narrative with it. When it comes to feeling our feelings, it's really important to pay a little less attention to the narrative if you can. And and try to focus in a little bit more on the bodily sensations. These sensations are only supposed to be here for about 90 seconds. They can last longer if we have a habit of ruminating, okay? Then we can basically keep calling those physical sensations back. Focusing on the physical sensation itself can help us not ruminate on the story. It gives our mind a different focal point that's still addressing the problem at hand that it's perceiving. So let's say I notice and I name, hmm, I'm feeling hurt. I may go inward and say, hmm, where is this hurt at? Where, what am I feeling? Maybe I feel a little bit in my gut. Maybe I feel a sort of heavy or a weight in my chest. This is what my hurting is. At this point, I may feel tears start to form in my eyes. That's okay. That's something that happens when we feel hurt, right? Or when we feel exhausted or when we feel tired or when we feel relieved that we're finally connecting with something. Whatever the case is, open to that, be with it, and just focus on the sensation itself. 
If you're feeling nothing, you can ask inward to your body, what do I need to feel safe to feel? Just see what comes up for you. A lot of people will teach about somatics, the body, the physical aspect of this is one thing, and then they'll teach the mind piece of it, the thoughts and the intellectualizing as another thing. My personal opinion is that mind-body connection is key. When we can get the mind and the body on the same page and communicating with one another well, a lot of breakthroughs start to happen. With that being said, even though it may feel and seem weird to speak to your body, try it out. Who's watching you? Whatever the case is, I want you to be with whatever you find there. If you find nothing, thank your body for giving you a shot and then tell it you'll be back soon. I recommend you continue to practice. For a lot of us, we haven't tried to partner with our bodies in such a way in so long that it's almost like building up a relationship of trust with our bodies and with our own emotions. Exploring our emotional landscape on this healing journey is a very vulnerable practice with ourselves. And we've been ignoring our body a lot of the time. We've been suppressing our anger. We've been suppressing and repressing a lot of these emotions. So to come back after all this time of saying, no, you're bad, you're bad, you don't belong here, you don't get to be here, and then suddenly saying, well, I wanna feel you now, it's gonna take some time for our bodies to open up. So if you feel nothing, that's okay. Just let it know, thank you for giving me a shot and then try again next time, okay? It's not a sign to give up. It's just a sign to take it easy, stay consistent, but take it easy, take it slow, take your time. If you do find something, I want you to bring compassion to the table and sort of hold, cradle those emotions that come up for you. Maybe you're getting a narrative coming up with them. Maybe you're not getting a narrative coming up with them. It's just the physical sensation. Either way, I want you to cradle that. It could be a happy cradle. You're feeling joy, you're feeling love. Be thrilled for yourself. But if anything else comes up, maybe if some anxiety comes up, some fear comes up, some sadness comes up, cradle that with compassion, okay? Again, this takes practice. We're not always going to get it the first time. So take it slow, take it easy. And it's also okay to adjust, right? Trust your body. It may signal you to get up and move. Some of us, our nervous systems are wired to be more active to get up and move. So we may actually have an easier time holding space for our emotions this way. If we are rocking in place, or maybe if, even if we're getting up and walking around, if we're we're moving, okay? I want you to try to experiment, explore for yourself. What is something that I can do for my body to help my body feel at ease opening up to me? Without letting all the feelings out at once, we don't want it to be overwhelming. We want it to be a good natural pace. We want it to be manageable. And again, keep in mind that the physical sensations of feelings only stick around for what, like 90 seconds? But because they can be so impactful, this might be a whole like ritual sort of thing. It has been a long standing tradition to have a girl's night with ice cream and movies. You know what I'm saying? So like, do what you gotta do. When you get to the step of all offering your feelings compassion, then it should only take about a minute or so for it to be felt, be heard, be seen, right? And then it will ease away. I wanna be clear, the more we fight our feelings at this step, the more we struggle to show a compassion, the longer the feeling may stick around. And it's because it's not actually being held. When it gets to that point where we're able to sort of surrender, the feeling is here, we're in a safe space to be able to feel it, so we're just gonna let it move through us. When we're gonna hold compassion for it along the way, that's when it's actually easier for the feeling to be able to move through and do what it's gotta do and go. But again, give yourself some grace because this does take practice. This isn't easy to do. Once we let that feeling out of our body, then if and when it's necessary, and when it feels relevant to, we now can be in a good headspace to reflect, to address the situation around the feeling, to address the narrative around the feeling, et cetera, et cetera. But trying to address the narrative and the situation while we're actively becoming the feeling, right? While we're actively consumed in the feeling, that's where we tend to make a lot of judgment calls that perhaps, maybe, depending on if we're triggered or not, depending on what the situation is, perhaps we think to ourselves, uh, I wasn't thinking very clearly, I could have handled that a little bit differently. And like I said, it's a maybe, it depends. I like the way Dr. Nicole LaPera put it when she said feelings function off of interpretations, right? And so if we're becoming that feeling, we're also becoming that interpretation. We're not seeing the bigger picture. We're not able to zoom out. Once we release the feeling from our body, we'll be able to zoom out a bit and get a different perspective and see for ourselves if, you know, the rational mind perspective aligns with the perspective that our feelings are coming up with. Now, obviously, if we're in some type of emergent kind of situation where we need to think quickly, act quickly, then do what you gotta do, trust your gut. But most cases, it's really more relational kind of stuff that can take time and can benefit from the time that we take to sort our stuff out and process before coming back to the situation to address it. A couple of other practices I found to be helpful were number one, every morning I wake up, check in with my body, ask how I'm feeling and ask what I need. Remember how I said earlier, feelings are communicating
communicating needs that haven't been met or needs that have been met, right? So I check in with my body, I ask what I'm feeling and I ask what I need. This is a baby step way to start to develop more of a partnership with your body so that the mind and body can start to get into alignment and move more in sync, more intuitively. Highly recommend it. And number two, to simply practice inviting other feelings to the table to support whatever feelings are already there. And so again, if I'm feeling anger and I notice anger coming up, I might invite compassion to the table. Anger might not want compassion to be at the table yet. Maybe I need to feel it and just like let it be first for a minute. Maybe I need to express it. Maybe I need to go for a run. Maybe I need to do a bunch of other stuff that I talk about in the crash course. But I also know from my own experience that the more that my anger and my compassion can work together in partnership, the better they can get along and figure out like what is their, what is their synergy? What is their flow? The more proud and empowered I am going to be with how I direct and channel my anger. Anyway, I'm going to leave us there. Go ahead and comment if you have any questions and hit the subscribe button because I will be putting out a lot more videos just like this one. All right, bye.